Uh, Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you all? Walaikum Assalam, sir. Okay, uh, guys, until the other participants will come, we will start revising our yesterday's session. Yes, Fazan, please. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Walaikum salam, Allah barakatuh. Yes, Fazan, how are you? Actually, Alhamdulillah, good, sir. But, sir, just we have received one mail. So, just I want to confirm with you from the Nibu. Just a minute, I am unable to listen to you properly. I don't know why. Now, am I audible? Bezan? Yes, sir. Are you getting my voice? Yeah, now I'm getting you. Okay, so actually, just uh, we have received a mail today from Nibosh. Okay. So just, uh, I want to uh, just, I want to. Just a minute, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, uh, hold on, my please. Yeah, uh, sir, now audible? Yeah, uh, I can listen you now. Okay, so just uh, today uh, we have received the mail at 3 p.m. Uh, from Nibosh IG to risk profiling submission. Okay, so just uh, we have in this, there is a core attachment is attached in this. Okay, and the in the body of the mail, it is mentioned that please uh, be informed that your Nibos IG registration has been done. Please fill below details in your examination of IG1 and IG2 report. Right. Further is learner uh, name and registration, everything is mentioned there. And right. then at the end, it is mentioned that uh, all the things are mentioned. Okay, all the things I got the point. So the assessment, the attachment is which is, which is attached over here in the mail. So in this there is right. a four attachment. So on which attachment we will work, or what is the procedure, how we will fill the all the required details of the forms. So oh, okay, okay, fine, fine. Regarding that, if you can give me some time okay. to first have a look on all these four files. Okay, yes. then I will. Uh, give you the answer it would be better because instead of giving you wrong answer i think i could give you the okay no it's just perfect a, answer, right okay no it's just my my purpose was yeah. to bring in your notice one day then. no problem just forward that email to me from your side uh, we will be having a look by today and i will let you know okay but, but, I, you I, uh, but I know yes please can you confirm your email id badar 
Okay, well, guys. Uh, yesterday, what did we discuss? We discussed about musculoskeletal health. That was our element six. Uh, Pizan, any other question, by the way? Sir? No, 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 sir, no, sir, no, sir. Okay, okay, fine. So, in our musculoskeletal health, basically, we discussed in our upper limb disorders, work-related upper limb disorders, our uh, basically musculoskeletal disorders, back injuries, back pain, uh, other chronic soft tissue injury where we discuss that how what are the high risk activities or how do we get injuries what are the risk factors involved and uh, then we uh, over here we discuss repetition force posture twisting design lighting layer what are the environmental factors task factors and equipment factor we discussed about them then we moved on to the ergonomics where we discussed about the ergonomical injuries which we are having the, those are by the way same upper limb disorders then we move to the control measures and we learned how we are going to set our working station if you are sitting in the office and uh, that was the end of module one then we move to the manual handling in which we discussed that if using the body force if you are going to lift carry push or pull the load this is what we call manual handling if you are doing manual handling what kind of injuries you are getting we learned about them how to perform the proper manual handling and then what are the risk factors or the main risk factors involved in the manual handling we discussed about load individual task and environment after that we move to the uh, control measures that how we can do how we can control this elimination assessed using handling aids modifying the task load or environment after that we move to the mechanical aids the mechanical lifting okay and uh, we also learned how we can minimize the manual handling handling risk in task load environment and individual in once you move over here it was our at the end of our second module the next module was about to perform the mechanical handling in which we started from uh, non-powered mechanical uh, equipment and uh, we use them basically over here we are again using the manual handling we are again using the manpower okay so that those uh, we discussed about those risks which are involved related to these machines what are what were their controls we discussed hello sir and, excuse me yes Yes, Adil. Sir, uh, I send a screenshot of that mail uh, in a group. You can be, you explain us to what is there, okay. what is the answer. Okay, okay, okay. Then uh, we then we move to okay, Adil. Then we move to uh, patient hoisting, small handling aids. Then we move to the forklift. We discuss that different kind of forklifts are there. What are their hazards? Their precautions for battery powered, for diesel, for LPG. And then we discussed about the lift and hoist, their precautions, their uh, controls. Then we moved to the conveyor, their precautions, their, uh, their sorry, their hazards and control. And then we moved to uh, cranes about their hazards. What are the factors of instability? What are the general requirements? Planning and preparation of the lift, then carrying out the lift and the way we are performing the uh, periodic inspection. Okay, and there was one. Uh, regulation regulation was lifting operation and lifting equipment regulation 1998 so we discussed about it and it was our topic number sorry element number six and uh, just hold on i will be going as you requested i will be moving to discuss the hold on guys i'll be first sharing what you have asked do you want me to discuss it now or do you want me to discuss it later on and the reason is i want today's today's topic is long it's lengthy so i wish if we can discuss it later on once we finish our topic sir in simply uh, you can uh, explain us in simply okay okay no problem just a minute 
Okay, over here. What is mentioned? Uh, hope you are studying well. Please inform that your new watch IG registration has been done. Please fill below details in your examination of IG1 and IG2 report. In the information, which information below details? Okay, this information. Learner name, your name has mentioned the Nibos registration form PDF. Is that attached over here or no? Is there any attachment there in the Nibos registration form in this email? Adil? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you have to mention in the learner name, you will be mentioning your name, learner number. Okay, you, you, you would be, you would have taken or you would have given one. Uh, there is only mention regarding the uh, assignments. How do we have to submit our assignments? This type of assignments, uh, attachments are there, sir. I think there is any form to that we have to fill our name and number so what the learner number this type of form did, are not there did you get did you get any kind of uh, just a minute did you get any kind of attachment in which your registration is mentioned yes saha no 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 sir we haven't received yes, any sir. kind Salaam of Volume Actually, sir, this one is uh, what I understand is uh, risk assessment exam number two, IG two. We have to submit before fifteen or on fifteen. Yeah. So that's what I okay. So, did you get uh, other than this? Did you get any other email as a registration? Yes, sir. We got attachment as like sample. Okay. We have to finish it off like before fifteen. Yeah. There would there would be one uh, other email in which you would have received your um yeah attachment yes sir we have registration, attachment. registration yes, sir, we have. okay so you will be your learner name your learner number means this learner number is your roll number okay in yes, easy words okay center number is 1374 this is our number center name start welcome training center this is our name you will be mentioning it over there for submission of gc2 risk uh, report risk assessment you will be submitting your risk assessment to this admin at staff.com.sa. Okay. You will be submitting your IGC2 report on this email address. This is what I know. And this is by the usual process. Yes, Fizan. Just already I have shared the mail with you. So if possible, I have shared all the attachments with you. So if possible, you can check yes, and then. Guys, is it mandatory now? I, I let Sorry you to interrupt you here, I'm not able to. No problem. By the way, these things are, uh, you have nothing to worry about it. Uh, okay. You will receive a uh, mail from M. Muhammad Nasir or other person. Yeah, yeah, I received that. I received that. Okay, the same thing, uh, your learner name, this, this, please note that there are some changes to IG2 guidance documents and assessment facts, mall practice policy and open book examination guide. I have attached the new risk profiling templates and guidance. We request you to please follow the new template and preparing the risk assessment. IG2 risk profiling report must be submitted on or before 15 June. Okay, and so uh, there is also a mention something has been changed. Uh, change. Just, just a minute, just a minute. You can submit this to filing to you can submit this to filing to electronic PDF recommended by replying this email. Okay, that's fine. Uh, risk to file to electronic PDF. Who sent this email? This email was sent to you by. From admin. Okay. This email is from our side. Okay, fine. So there are some changes. What are changes? There is one. Okay, attachment. 
policy scope regulatory criteria mal practice this is all about my screen can be it will be easier for me uh, my screen should be shared with you stop share and then screen share okay can you see my screen yes, yes sir. sir yes okay, sir over here we have policy and procedure for suspected malpractice in examination and assessment in case if you are going to do some malpractice you are copying and pasting the data of someone then these are the rules and regulations okay this is clear okay so if you okay. want to read it it's up to you it has nothing to do with the exam if you are not copying and pasting from someone okay this one is ig2 checklist okay this is the submission you should have to show that you have covered the minimum criteria this is by the way this is checklist the checklist that you will be using that i have mentioned these point on my report okay this is for you that see if i am i'm teaching you what i am doing i am writing it on my book on daily basis what i have taught you okay this is for myself so this would be for you that only if you want to submit something oh, sorry if you if you have uh, you of course you have to submit this uh, ig2 risk assessment so that would this checklist we have to fill it sir you, what we have to mention yeah, would be helping you yeah that what is uh, what you have done or what is missing there in the report which you are preparing and this is an example yes this is an example example of the exam that, sheet yeah that how you are how to uh, you have to write how you are going to yes how you are going to prepare the ig2 report it should yeah, be yeah. looking like in this way and over here you can see some of the references are mentioned also okay yes. in case if you have to mention in case if you are writing something if you are writing it from some kind of legal resources that would be very perfect okay so if you are mentioning the resources in this way okay or references in this way that would be nice okay see another uh, reference is mentioned over here and i would suggest you to mention the reference only uh, or to consult with only hse.gov.uk as he has consulted over here clear so this is just a sample report okay after how, that how we have to submit it this is yeah this is your main report okay where you are going to prepare now uh, we okay. have to fill Once, this one and we have to submit in uh, before the 14 uh, 15 january june 15 june exactly once you will be filling it up okay once you will write it over here it yeah. would be looking like this one okay okay next is ig2 guidance guidance is there that in case not in case of course you have to prepare your ig2 these are the guidelines how you will be preparing your ig2 report okay, okay. clear okay. and this one is just a kind of uh, video attachment just for their marketing purposes how this do we, how we have to do this everything yeah so main one is this one ig2 forms electronic submission so this is the basic thing which you you must be consulting this is just a kind of checklist that in this report in this report if you have sub uh, if you have mentioned all the points these are the required points that you must be including in this report so once you write this report you must open this checklist and start checking over here that yeah I have done this, I have done this, I have done this. If something is missing, then what you do? Include that and then send it. Okay. okay. And by okay. the way, by the way, okay, done. Now over here, oh sorry. Over here, we will be opening this one. Now, by the way, I will be I will be telling you something very interesting. Uh, your book. 
book book where is your book let me open the book yeah this assessment on your book by the way just i i just opened it randomly you might be having different uh, i mean page and you would see this kind of page on your book clouds not clear uh, sir it is not clear okay let me tell you it is on page 6-28 page 6-28 this is you mean that uh, the, the book is sent to us in a, in a mail right yeah ig2 okay let me try to open that book for you guys over here it may be easier for us to have an understanding i'm sending a sir in a group a book i i guess book is already uh, with everyone right yeah, no no was... they just paid. this one you, you are showing it Okay, you are sending it, so that would be good. Yeah, over here, Send it, sir. Send it. Okay, great. Yeah, over here. Okay. Can you see this? Yes, yes, we can see that. Okay. So guys, what is mentioned over here in these in these clouds? Hazards. All hazards. Hazards. Okay. So what you have to do? List them out. Okay, on one page, like you can say Excel or Word file. List them out. Okay, you can manually write them. Whenever you are going to prepare your IG2 report, okay, put this list in front of you. Okay, uh, let me tell you what did I do when I was preparing my report in 2014. I list them out all on one uh, sheet. And because we had to move practically in the field, I went to Algate over here. So I went over there and uh, I started identifying all the hazards over there. Okay, that for example, radiation, what kind of radiations are over there? I started looking over there. It was a yard and welding process was going on. So I noted down all kind of ultraviolet, A, B, C, D, whatever the hazard, uh, sorry, the radiations were there. Then I moved to work related upper limb disorder. Then I moved to work equipment, work related driving, mental health, vibration, noise, movement of people and vehicle, load handling equipment, manual handling. So throughout the list of hazards, I moved, I identified the hazard. Okay, our report was somehow a little bit, not little bit, yes, somehow a little bit different uh, with the one you are filling out. Because we had to fill it. I, I was the one who filled it with my hands and submitted it on the, uh, uh, by hand to my teacher. 
so uh, we had to write it so what fizan yes please sorry to interrupt you sir just uh, i want to uh, need to uh, ask you this just to currently i am in case okay in jubail city okay and i am working as a safety officer so currently uh, we are working on one project so i have prepared the risk assessment all the things from myself so can i uh, can i take that one can we use that one of course you can use that one i am just i am just giving telling you what did i do that i listed them out i moved in the field and i identified all the hazards their control measures and then uh, who is responsible as per i mean as per our report i mentioned everything on the spot so later on when i came back i started making it i mean on the neat papers okay i remember that me and my friend we were using these kind of diaries to put the lines on the sheets so because we we were over there in the field so we did that i mean in the way that we we were writing now you guys can move in the field taking the list of these hazards identifying all these hazards their control measures on the spot bring it back okay bring it back to your home type it by yourself okay and uh, then prepare the report because hazard identification is not a big deal you can identify all these hazards maybe within 1 hour 2 hours preparing a report and the estimation is very important that whatever the control measures i am defining these control measures are actually existing over there or not okay and then what additional control measures i can identify over there then what about their cost these can be implemented or cannot be implemented so it's very important just so you can do that it's up to you yes fizan just if you will allow me then i can tell one two things with you if you will allow because uh, yeah oh, no problem we are okay. getting late i don't have an issue okay today so just, is, uh, is thursday so i wanted everyone to leave early yes please <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but sorry sir but we have i have some doubts so just i want last to, time, uh, if, uh, if it will uh, clear then you can explain it yeah then yes more yes, question training, training uh, less uh, less bleed in war so just uh, and for if uh, so just uh, i want to ask one thing sir that uh, yes please just we have prepared uh, currently we are working on a civil project okay, right sir? and the project is in confined space civil what work is, is in project just we are working on a screw pump in marafik marafik okay uh, yeah so just uh, we have prepared the uh, our team has prepared the risk assessment all the things uh, accordingly we have what are the hazards related with this job okay so uh, what safety precaution we will do what, what is our residual uh, these all things so we have prepared so can we use that or can use we take... no problem use it no problem you know the report i the report i made i submitted it to the management of algate as well that this is my report i prepared it because i was uh, submitting it for my ig2 and i passed this report means that it is having worth for you uh, you can fix the hazard if you want so i submitted it to the management over there so it's up to you, you uh, because and one very important thing for all those guys i will not bet on this of course <laughs> that is not my job but i am sure if you are doing your job i mean your work assignment your paper exam by yourself okay if you are doing it by yourself i am sure you are not going to get failed because if you do it by yourself it needs hard work and hard work the hard worker never fails this is you can write these words on the paper anywhere you can mark my words if you are actually doing the hard work with honesty you can never fail okay and hard work is nothing hard work what is hard work related to nibosh igc just have to have a presence of mind okay smart work. Uh, i'll not say smart work smart work yes okay smart work you can say yes so just you need to have a presence of mind and you just need to focus on what they are asking us simple 
okay and just go in that way simple and uh, yeah. uh, uh, hi sir uh, one question to, from my side since i am not belongs to hsc at all <laughs> i have some uh, see uh, the first one uh, the uh, you have some um, other day you have mentioned that uh, our exam will be on 7th right on 7th yes okay uh, and uh, this is uh, the same one the exam is comes for the same 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 thing uh, that i mean uh, you told me that uh, one uh, attachment to be uh, submitted you know on uh, risk assessment to be submitted on the, on, see this is ig2 this is you can say exam 2 okay ah, okay, okay. Ah. and ig1 is different one ig1 on the day just the link is mentioned in the email on the day you will be having a, in in your logging as you will be logging in at the time which is mentioned on your date sheet once you will log log in over there you will be having one exam over there so you okay. download it okay one exam sheet would be there based on the exam you will fill it up and then next day the same day next day whenever you will upload it over there okay 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 so uh, next day when and so any timeline is there that when when it is to be uploaded on before within the time frame for example for example right now it's 6 o'clock okay. so my exam time is 6 o'clock mm. as per my country time for example, for example so if it comes over here at 6 o'clock tomorrow at 5:59 before that any time i can submit i can submit it back after 5 minutes no problem okay it means that 24 hours 24 hours okay uh, so 24 hours uh, that exam is on the on the link where mentioned that we click when it is click clicking uh, the time starts yeah but remember once you submit it then i think now you cannot get it back so this is why it's very important that you yeah, must be <laughs> yes Sorry, I I learned with you. Yes, uh, Vijay. Yes, Mr. Vijay. Uh, you are saying something, sir. In yeah, between. once you are once you are submitting it, then you cannot get get it back. Huh? Then you cannot download it back, and then you cannot get it. So that is why I submit the exam one time. Okay, understood. So uh, that 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 would be one seventh. You said uh, that the timing and uh, 20, 24 uh, into uh, twenty four hours, and uh, that is that would be. The, uh, I'm yeah. clicking the link on seventh, right? Yeah, I I don't know what is the time and date mentioned. Uh, if you are over here on UAE or in India or wherever you are, so okay. it would be the time and date would be mentioned over there. Please check yeah. that. Okay, that uh, that's okay. But please mute your mic. Keep your mic on. Mute. Yeah, yeah. So of the so that link we should be clicking on seventh when the exam date, right? Seventh is I am told that to seventh is an exam date. Seventh is the exam date, but please make sure what is mentioned over there on the date sheet. Okay. Okay, okay. the okay. attachment okay. which you would have received already. Today, Just today, one. Today. Yeah. Today received one, right? Yeah, maybe today or maybe the earlier day you would have received it. Okay, fine. And so can... what? Yeah, then uh, this today's email was from staff side. That I mean the training center. Mm -hmm. The earlier email you would have received that was directly from Nibosh, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So check I, I, that email. Uh, so to my other participants also for just for you are uh, bringing to a notice. I have received only three mails uh, from right. uh, Nebosh. Only I think others also got only three, right? Anyone can confirm? Yes, yes, Vijay. You, uh, hi, hi, Mr. Faisan. Uh, yeah, hi. You have also got uh, since till now it is three mails you got it, right? Yes, yes, we have received the more three mails. Ah, okay. From okay. Nebosh. Sorry to bother you that I am confirming and that. No, it is it is coming on my private mail so so many mails are there so in between Nabosh, okay fine anyway thank you for confirmation no problem no thank problem. you mr so, badru thank you uh, thank you very much and 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 the project comes on you said the risk assessment project before before 15 uh that is also that this is today what you received this is the risk assessment project 
Yeah, but that, there is no timeline work. Before 15, we have to submit, right? Yeah, before 15, you can submit. Bro, if you don't mind, we can discuss on it after class close. Done, 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 Adil. I think discussion is done now. Only for that uh, because tomorrow is my duty, sir. Tomorrow is your duty? Ah, okay, yes. fine. Okay, fine. No worries. We will move to our training. Okay. Mr. Vijay, if you are having any question, please let me know. Huh? Oh, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing else. Oh, okay. 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 No uh, fine. You can send me later on messages on my WhatsApp number and I will be answering you. Don't worry. Okay, guys. Uh, we had revised our module 6 and then there was a question and question was a uh, question diverted us. And now we are moving to discuss our element 7, element 7, which is all about chemical and biological agent. What we are going to discuss in this element, we will be describing the forms, classification, and health risk from exposure to hazardous substances. We are having different hazardous substances. Some of them, we call them chemical agents. Some of them, we call them biological agents. What are these? What are their forms, liquid, solid, gas? We will see if these are hazardous or non-hazardous for us. We will see and uh, what are the health risks we are getting from them. And uh, next, we will be able to describe what should be considered when undertaking an assessment of health risks from substances commonly encountered in the workplace. Commonly, what are different substances we are having on our workplaces, okay? When we are having face-to-face -face contact with them, what kind of problems do we face, okay? And uh, what we have to consider, what kind of control measures we have to implement. We will be able to describe the use and limitation of occupational exposure limits, including the purpose of long-term and short-term exposure limits we are having some occupational exposure limits. When you are on the job, you can get exposed with the chemicals. When you get exposed with the chemicals, you inhale some chemical. Chemicals can get entered into your body through different routes. We will be learning about them. In case, if the chemical, if you inhale the chemical, how it reacts to your body, does it give you some kind of immediate reaction or if it gives you some kind of chronic or long-term effect or after some years so what are those effects we will be learning over here and remember we will discuss about the very important thing uh, commonly over here in saudi arabia you would have heard the words tell stell idlh we are going to discuss about all those in our occupational exposure limits what are these limits when we stay on the job site for how long we can get exposed with one chemical for example uh, with one chemical that could be in the form of liquid solid or gas so we will see we will see about the occupational exposure limits next we will be able to describe the control measures to reduce the risk of ill health from exposure to hazardous substances what are the control measures we will be implementing to protect us then we will be able to describe the hazards, risks, and controls associated with some specific agents. For example, we will be discussing asbestos, we'll be discussing silica, we'll be discussing uh, cement, okay? We, like these kind of uh, substances, these kind of specific agents, which we are usually having on the construction sites, we will see, even we are using them in the uh, renovation. So we will see, what are these uh, what are the hazards associated with some of these uh, substances and how do we control how do we protect ourselves so our first topic is forms of hazardous substances classification of hazardous substances and health risks from hazardous substances first thing comes first forms of chemical agents Chemical agents, if we talk about chemical agent, the word chemical agent basically means any chemical which is in the natural state without any artificial process. Okay, you are not doing any artificial process. It is existing naturally, whatever the, the job you are performing, okay, and it is appearing in the 
in its natural state. For example, we are having solid chemicals. Uh, by the way, matter is having usually three states. There are four, but we call them three states, solid, liquid, and gas, and the fourth one is plasma. Of course, on the workplace, we would be having only three states, solid, liquid, and gas. If we talk about solid, uh, per, uh, solid uh, state of the chemical, we can have dust or fibers, just like asbestos, asbestos fibers, which are small threads like particles, and uh, uh, that can become airborne. For example, if you are going to break the wall, it will become airborne. And as I earlier, I explained to you that this is very harmful material. It goes and settles itself in your lungs and gives you some kind of uh, disease. What is that disease? By the way, we will be discussing, we call it asbestosis, easy words, lung cancer. So we will be discussing about these. Next is gas. We can have a chemical in the form of gases like H2S, carbon monoxide, and fumes as well. What is fumes? When solid converts itself into gas. For example, if you go to welding shop, in the welding shop or closer to the welding shop, you will be having different kind of smell. What is over there? We call it, we are having welding fumes over there. Okay, if we are having welding fumes over there, what are those welding fumes? When we are welding the material, okay, two metals are being welded to each other basically these are getting melt and at higher temperature these become airborne the solid becomes gas this is what we call fumes uh, next is uh, liquid liquid as you know mist what is mm -hmm. mist one you start spraying something once you start spraying something we call it mist and uh, vapors vapors if you put the liquid in its natural form and naturally if it start evaporating it itself that is what we call vapors so all these basically if we if we focus on all these particles or all these chemical agents finally we realize that all these chemicals can be we can find all these chemicals in the form of gas in the form of airborne chemical which could be present on our job site right so i mean even from solid we are having dust which can fly in the air Fibers are in the air. We, call, we already agree that it, these are airborne. Gas, fumes in the air. Liquid, liquid particles can be sprayed and can become like paint. Paint is having its moisture. Okay, we smell the paint. Once you perform the painting, even if you are doing the brush painting on the wall, you start smelling it. Why you start smelling it? How do you smell it? Because paint becomes airborne and it reaches our senses. That is why we sense it. Okay, so these are different form of chemical agents and uh, the physical form greatly affects the hazard, hazard present and the route of entry into the body. If the chemical is solid, like if I'm having solid chemical, of course, it is not going to get entered into my body in this form. But if it, it converts itself into liquid or gas, then it, it can be absorbed very easily into my skin as a liquid or it can be inhaled very easily uh, while I'm breathing as a gas. So it depends what is the form of that chemical. Next is biological agents. Biological agents are those agents which we call them, these are microorganisms which are having adverse impact on our health. Okay. So over here, we are having different example like uh, I call it fungi, you, you call it fungi or whatever you call it. It gives you farmer's lung, bacteria, legionaria bacteria, which is causing legionnaire's disease, uh, leptospirosis. This is also one. We are going to, by the way, discuss about these two things, especially regarding legionnaria bacteria. We are having emergency showers on our side, and we don't flush the water occasionally. We don't maintain it. We are thinking that water is filled over there one time, okay? Alas, if in case, if required, we will use that as an emergency shower. Otherwise, no need. Let it be there. Over there, over there, if you are not flushing the water, if you are not regularly maintaining it, what will be happening? We are having this bacteria over there. And what is its, its effect? Once we will be discussing about it, we will learn in the later slides. 
then uh, viruses we can have hiv hepatitis corona was one of the example so you have gone through about biological agents from 2019 up to 2022 and uh, it was a good training for all of you guys regarding the blood borne pathogens even so uh, so these are our two basic forms of chem uh, agents one of them is chemical agent one of them is biological agent we are having these now what are their effects on the health we can have acute effect we can have chronic effect acute effect means short term effect you inhale something you drink something and immediately it starts giving you its effect for example if you start drinking hot water immediately you start having um, drops appearing uh, sweat drops appearing over here what is that it's it's an acute effect okay if you inhale some uh, some gas like h2s carbon monoxide at higher concentration what will be happening your central nervous system may get fail excuse me who is who has turned this mic on okay then the next is uh where i was yeah these are the short term effects and uh, usually we are having if a short term effect when we are having high level of exposure and even at high level of exposure if you get for a very short time of exposure it will be affecting your body okay and uh, as i mentioned quick effect and uh, for example exposure to high concentration of chlorine gas is one of them over here in aramco everyone is being trained on h2s awareness of h2s carbon monoxide these are the two gases which are giving you acute effect next is uh, chronic which is basically long term effect and uh, usually we are have if we are having lower levels of exposure but for a long time or sometimes even for a short time lower level of exposure for a short time but if the chemical goes inside our body like let's say through inhalation for example asbestos it will stay over there immediately it does nothing but later on we have some like uh, in case of asbestos in your book it is mentioned after 10 years okay so depends upon person to person from 2 to 3 years or 4 years up to 10 years you would be having some pain in your lung and then what will be happening you will go to the doctor doctor will uh, doctor will identify that it is uh, asbestos or lung cancer so that is basically the chronic effect you don't have anything you don't get any effect immediately but later on you are having the effect of that chemical the next is in some chemicals we are having both effects acute effect as well as the chronic effect for example if you start taking alcohol but for a very uh, i mean uh, in a very short amount in a very less amount but you are taking it or if you start just taking panadol just start taking panadol which is we consider it a medicine but take it on regular basis immediately you start feeling okay but later on you will be having uh, adverse impact on your health okay you will be just like a kind of uh, person who who takes drug without it you would not be able to survive so of course chronic effects uh, some some chemicals are having acute effects as well as the chronic effects over here uh examples i mentioned organic solvent alcohol and uh, h2s is also one of them which is giving you acute effect as well as the chronic effect if you inhale it in lower concentration and uh, the next is uh, the next topic is classification of chemical uh, chemicals hazardous to health we are having different uh, kind of classes okay one of them is physiochemical effect the chemical if it is giving us some kind of physical effect for example if the for example if we are having a highly flammable chemical explosive or oxidizing if it gets splash on our body it will be giving us some kind of uh, physical damage physical uh, damage to your uh, cells so that would be the physiochemical effect the next is health effect we are having the health effects for example if chemical is toxic or carcinogenic which can cause cancer 
then environmental effects are of course they are harmful to aquatic life if you just throw it there and of course it is dangerous for the people oh, sorry for the aquatic life for uh, the water life easy words and uh, we are having european regulations over here classification labeling and packaging of substances which are which is what we call clp clp is basically directly acting in uk so it doesn't need to be implemented through uh, uk legislation we don't have anything over here regarding the clp we are having ghs which is a global globally harmonized standard okay and it is global and therefore we consider it as a good uh, standard uh, that needs to be implemented that needs to be obeyed or uh, obliged next is effects of uh, the same effects of chemical hazards to health we, if we are having acute toxicity small doses cause death or serious illness for example for example if we are having uh, small doses of h2s okay it it will be it can pull the man down immediately next is if we are having skin corrosion or irritation destroys living skin tissues or causing inflammation serious eye damage or eye irritation could also be there destroy eye tissues or causes inflammation in the eye respiratory or skin sensitization so in case if you are inhaling it you it can cause asthma or allergic dermatitis okay the next is germ cell mutagenicity causes hereditary genetic mutation hereditary means inherited it will be shifted to to your children even carcinogenicity that causes cancer reproductive toxicity causes sterility or infertility in human or is harmful to unborn child specific target organ toxicity causes damage to specific body organ and aspiration hazard harmful if inhaled into the lungs if you are inhaling it it could, it could be harmful just like yesterday we discussed yesterday as yes, we discussed uh, no the day before yesterday we discussed about radon gas do you remember the day before yesterday we discussed radon gas which was having radioactive property what it was containing it was containing alpha particles which causes ionization inside your lungs that basically destroys the lungs do you remember guys yes yes only one only one guy said yes i yes. remember Okay, yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Uh, so over here, uh, the next is sensitizing agents like chemical respiratory sensitizers causes occupational asthma. For example, if you are working in uh, in an area where you are dealing with some kind of floor, that floor dust. Okay, if it goes inside your lungs, that that can cause asthma. Isocyanates are the fibers which are used in paints and varnishes. If you inhale it, of course, you are having issues in the lungs. Uh, skin sensitizers causing allergy dermatitis for example epoxy resins which is very famous nowadays in the waterproofing if it falls upon your hand of course uh, dermatitis as it is mentioned it is non infectious skin condition where the skin becomes dry flaky cracked and painful it would be very dry and of course pain would be there two kinds of dermatitis are there primary contact dermatitis once it will fall on your hand okay or on your skin skin reacts at the point of contact only once you remove it once you wash it after some days or maybe the same day it would be okay uh, skin will be recovered then allergic or secondary contact dermatitis sensitizing reaction dermatitis all over the skin that usually takes some time or sometimes it is too long to cure so these are the different chemicals two basically different classification of the chemicals are there one of them is chemical agent and one of them is biological agent these are the two forms then based on these two form we are we studied about the acute and chronic effect then we classify the chemicals and then we have seen that what are the effects of these chemicals these chemicals okay what are the effect of these chemicals on our body starting from the acute toxicity skin corrosion eye damage up to uh, dermatitis so this was our module it was our module 1 in which we had discussed forms classification and health risks from hazardous substances
so guys let's have a break now it's maghrib prayer time so after the prayer as usual we will be back and we will be starting our module to that is about the assessment of health risk you guys are working in the field you guys are doing it by the way in case if you have to you guys are by the way doing it but till now you don't know if you have to do or if you have not done it how we do that we will be learning about it so let's have a break and after the break we will be having our element 7 point sorry our module 7.2 mr better uh, how much time expecting after this uh, just a plan plan uh, yeah. my plan was my plan was today to make it short but i think uh, we will try to finish up to 9 we will divide our lesson into two days okay this is my plan don't worry okay thank you no problem no problem up to 9 maximum huh? inshallah okay uh, goodbye guys see you after the break